Alrighty, so in today's video, we are going to be talking about 10 apps that you should use on your Raspberry Pi 4. And these apps can just make your life easier, or it just might be a useful addition to your workflow with your Raspberry Pi 4. So without further ado, let's jump right in and see what these applications are. So the first application I want to mention is going to be something called PyApps. And I've talked about this application many, many times on my channel. And it's just because it's an amazing application that makes using the Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi OS so incredibly easier. Like this thing has so many applications in here. So PyApps is basically an app store for the Raspberry Pi 4 that makes apps that are usually not very easy to install on your Raspberry Pi 4 much easier to install with just one click of the button it's basically a it just has a lot of bash scripts that's put together using yad as the graphical user interface to make pi apps and when you have both those things together you get pi apps and the developer botspot has really done an amazing job and i mean it just works really well so how do i install pi apps well you're first going to head over to the github page for pi apps and you are gonna copy this installation link right here, and you're gonna paste that into your terminal, hit enter, and just wait a couple of seconds or minutes, depending on your internet connection, and then you will have PyApps installed. It really is that easy. So what type of application does PyApps has? Well, they have, they, let's go to the All Apps tab right here, and we have all types of applications, everywhere from terminals to like Android Buddy, to coding applications to flashers we just have so many amazing applications we have games in here we have web browsers there really are a ton and if i went through all these you know that would take quite a long time if i were to go through these things forever that's why i'm not going to be doing that in this video but i just do want to mention that pi apps is definitely an app you should try and if you are interested please do install it and yeah since this app is going to be important for the rest of a lot of my other apps that are on the list so keep this in mind so yeah this is pi apps so app number two is going to be an application called stacer and you may ask well what is stacer well stacer is basically a application that that does a lot of stuff for a raspberry pi 4 but it can act act as a task manager it can wipe unnecessary files from our system we can basically disable the startup applications we can wipe our system like wipe our trash or logs we can search for applications that are installed on our system and there's a lot that can be configured from stacer and it really is useful on your raspberry pi 4 so first of all how do I install this? Well, you're going to open up the terminal and you're going to want to just type sudo apt install stacer. It's in the repositories. It's super simple install like this. Install it on your Raspberry Pi 4 and you will be able to enjoy this application. So let's just dive a little bit deeper and see what this application does. So right now you can see I'm using 5639. It's showing how much of my CPU I'm using. I'm using 518 megabytes out of my eight gigabytes of RAM. And this is how much disk space I have. So it shows me my download speed and my upload speed, which is pretty awesome. Some system info right here. And then right here, we can configure our startup applications. And then we have our system cleaner. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select all, click this icon right here. It's gonna search. And you see, I do have a little bit of files in logs and caches and stuff. So I'm gonna click select all right here and I'm gonna wipe it all from my system and type in my password. And this is a way just to keep your system a little bit cleaner. Oops. So this way you can just have a cleaner system with that with less trash in your system. And here like it's for files. So you can search for files in here. You can open up the browse tab too and you can look for all your files. Or this right here is gonna be the system services so you can see what is running or what is running in the background. In the processes, you can see all of your processes. And uninstall you can uninstall applications like right now on my system I have the application NeoFetch so I can click this icon right here and I could actually uninstall it so it gives me kind of like a graphical user interface to manage my packages which is pretty useful and history of CPU we can see some history of our network disk write CPU and stuff like that 
and host manager we can see your IP addresses and different things like that our app repository so we can control what repositories we have on our system right now we can turn them off right here or even delete them if we don't want them anymore and yeah so this is about it for Stacer. Stacer is a really useful application I mean as you saw there's a lot that you can do from it so I would recommend installing it on your system so the third application on the list is going to be an application called box 64 not box 86 this is going to be called box 64 so box 64 only works on 64 bit operating systems like raspberry pi 64 and what does it allow you to do well it allows you to emulate linux x64 applications box 86 allows you to emulate linux x86 applications but this allows you to emulate linux x64 applications so more modern applications so if you are interested to know what you can do with this check out Pitseb's Pit github page and stuff like that i don't have any app to test out right now but as you can see if i typed in box 64 you can see that it is installed and it just allows you to be able to run some more modern applications on here and if you are into games you can run some linux x8 x64 games with this so it is a really useful type of emulator and i would recommend checking it out and, it, and learning more about it so you can also install it from pi apps like i just showed so if you have Pi apps, it's in the tools category and right here you can just hit the box 64 and hit install and it's really that simple to get box 64 up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4. So the next app in the list is going to be an app called Flameshot. So you may be asking, well what is Flameshot? Well Flameshot is actually a screenshot manager since there really isn't one that comes pre-installed on Raspberry Pi OS as far as I am concerned. So what this does is it's a pretty useful one. So I click, click right here and I can just get however much my window I want to get like that. I can hit enter. And then right here, so we have a few different options. So this right here is gonna allow me to open it with image viewer. So I could click that right there and you can see there's my screenshot. So that's one way that we can do it. Another way is we could go like this, hit enter, or we don't have to enter my bad. You can click right here and you can upload this capture to something like Imgur and then you can just share a link with people rather than having to actually send a file. Like if you had a file limit or if that, if you just wanted to be a little better or something like that, you can just upload that thing right there and it will actually give you a link to use instead, which I think is pretty useful. So Flameshot is definitely cool. How do I install it? Well, you can install it from Pi Apps as well. It's gonna be, again, in the tools category right here, Flameshot. And yeah, so that's basically Flameshot. It's a very useful screenshot manager for Linux. All right, so next in the list is gonna be an app called Simple Screen Recorder. And this is gonna allow us to record our screen just like something like OBS would. But in my opinion, OBS is a little bit too heavy for the Raspberry Pi 4. So this one should work a little bit better. So you launch it like this and you can see, you can see record the entire screen. And one thing I noticed, if you don't actually have audio, you know, like some type of audio input, and you have this selected, it won't work correctly or it won't even record your screen. So if you don't, if you're, if you're like me, you don't have that, just untick that to make sure. Click continue and I do wanna keep asking MKV instead of MP4 or anything like that. And just hit continue. And you can hit start recording and bam we will be recording our screen right now and it's basically going to be able to record everything that's happening on our screen and then let's say we're already, we want to be done with the recording now we'll hit pause we'll hit save recording and we'll open folder right here and let's click this icon right here so you see it does work and we can have our recording fairly well on here using simple screen recorder so if you want to record your screen it's a good app to have on your raspberry pi 4 that i surely would recommend so next on the list is going to be something called a drop down terminal and what is a drop down terminal well it's a terminal that basically drops down from the top just like this did and i can type in something like neo fetch if i could type correctly neo fetch hit enter right there and you can see we can see our different stuff i could type in h top we could see our system resource usage and stuff like that so it's really useful if you want a terminal in a hurry and well how do i install this again it's going to be from pi apps so you can click go over to your pi apps the part and it's going to be in the tool selection as well and well what is the default key well in this case it's going to be f12 so 
like when would i actually need this well let's say you're in the browser or in the file manager like you're like working full screen right here you're doing something important you hit you can hit f12 do your terminal business hit f12 again and it just goes out of your way so it's a really easy way to have the terminal launch and open and honestly it does seem pretty useful in different cases so yeah and well, there also is a customization options for that terminal in Quake preferences. And you can change the terminal color, you can change the different things. There are honestly are a lot of settings in here that I would recommend going through if you're interested. And you can hit this tick mark, it doesn't come by default, but if you want to start at login, hit this tick mark and you will have Quake open at login. So yeah, this is a really useful drop down terminal that's available from Pi Apps for your Raspberry Pi 4. So next in the list is going to be an application called Snapdrop. You may be asking, well, what is this? Or you might have even heard of this before. Well, if you go to the internet tab, you'll have Snapdrop. You actually have to install this from PyApps again. A lot of applications from PyApps, I know, but it really is a useful little application that allows us to do a lot of stuff. So, well, what is this? Well, it's basically AirDrop. You know what AirDrop is on iOS, Apple devices? Well, this allows you to do it between basically any type of device and on your other devices you can just open up your web browser go to snapdrop.net and you can access this so here you can see this is my iphone right here and i'm going to click i can see my linux com computer right here i'm going to click on it i'm going to send a photo to it right now so i'm going to do that and i'll add it to my system right here bam look at this i already have a photo right here and it's going to say ask to save before downloading i'll hit save right here all right, so you may be like, where did that photo go? Where, where is that? Well, I can go right here to files and it's gonna be in downloads right here. We'll click this icon right here and bam, look, that's the photo I just sent from my iPhone to my Raspberry Pi 4 over the network. And you can do this from like a Windows PC to your Raspberry Pi 4, or you can send it from your Raspberry Pi 4 to your other devices. So it basically allows you to airdrop to any device and it really is useful, I mean, if you're in a hurry, this might be a way to send pictures, files, anything between different devices. It's very useful, so I would recommend checking it out from Pi Apps. So next in the list is going to be an application called Synaptic. So what is the Synaptic Package Manager, you may ask? Well, I just said what it does. It's a package manager, and basically it gives you a graphical user front end for the apt terminal base type of thing so let me type in my password real fast so you know when you're in your terminal and you type in something like sudo apt install neofetch sudo apt install htop something like that well you don't really get to see it with your eyes you can't search those i mean there might might be ways but yeah but this basically allows you to see those packages in this nice little app it doesn't look the most modern but it definitely gets the job done so i, I could hit search and i could search for something like i said before neofetch I'll type that in, I'll hit enter, and it's gonna find that package for me if it's there. And it's already installed, so I could click this right here, and I could go mark for reinstallation, and I could reinstall it. Or let's say I want to install something that wasn't on my system. So what could that be? Hmm, that could be something like Nemo, the file manager. I'll hit enter to search for that, give it a second to launch, and it's gonna come up with different options. So there are definitely, it didn't come straight up with that one. But right here it is, here, Nemo File Manager. So you click this right here, and I could go Mark for Installation. You hit that right there, and you could hit Mark. And then you would have to go ahead and hit Apply and start to install the application. So if sometimes you find it hard to install applications from the terminal, this may be a little application app that can help you to make stuff easier. So yeah, and how do you install this? We actually have to install it from the terminal. So in the terminal, you're gonna just type in sudo app install synaptic, hit enter and bam, then you'll be able to have the application on your Raspberry Pi 4 64 bit. So our ninth app in this list is gonna be Firefox. So I felt like I should include some web browser in this. And well, as you know, Firefox is a really popular web browser and Raspberry Pi OS comes with Chromium. And if you're someone who enjoys Firefox, you might want this application on here. But if you open up the terminal right now and you went ahead, you typed in sudo apt install, one second, sudo apt install Firefox and you hit enter. And you're gonna see right here, it says 
well, it's already installed. But usually if I hadn't ever installed Firefox, it would say there is no installation candidate. And that is because by default on here, you have to install the Firefox-ESR version. You can't install this real version, the normal version. So how did I get this installed? Well, again, it's gonna be through PyApps. I've mentioned PyApps a lot in this video and that's because it is so useful on the Raspberry Pi 4. So Firefox is in the internet tab right here and then you go over to the web browsers. And yeah, so right here we have Firefox rapid release. So it means it's one of the later releases. It's not the ESR version, which is something that a lot of people do wanna use on the Raspberry Pi 4. I mean, I don't know about a lot of people, but some people. So here we have, and we can type in Pi 4, I don't really know if this is any faster or any better than Chromium, but I know some people prefer Firefox, and if you do prefer it, here you have it, and you can enjoy Firefox on your Raspberry Pi 4. So yeah, I hope this is useful. So our last application in the list out of all 10 of these is gonna be an application called BPYTOP. So this is an internal application. I'll type in BPYTOP to launch it right here, and it's gonna launch for me in one second. And bam, here we go. So this is like a really advanced version of HDOP. So right here we can see how much memory we have, how much memory we are using, how much is available, cache and free. Here we can see how much disk space we have. Here we can see our download speeds, our upload speeds, our programs that are running and our CPU usage. So there is really so much information in BPY Top. I really think it's one of it's a really good one to use to see your system resource usage but sure if you are traditional or you like htop which i still i use htop a lot of the time so you can still use htop but i personally thought it would be cool to mention bpy top in this video and yeah so that is our last application and how do we how do you install bpy top we just type in sudo app install BPY top so it's really simple sudo app install BPY top and you'll have BPY top up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4 so we've come to the end and I mentioned 10 applications that I think are pretty useful for the Raspberry Pi 4 and a lot of them were installed through Pi apps which is cool but yeah so these are some applications I thought are useful what applications do you use on your Raspberry Pi 4 or especially Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit let me know in the comments below and let me know what you thought about this video did you enjoy it would you rather be doing something else let me know so yeah if you like the video please that like button and a subscribe would also be incredible so, thanks for watching.